So today we're talking to uh, Patrick Mason, the International Director, member of the Board of Directors for the Knights of Columbus. And Patrick, I'm curious, tell me about, uh, about how you got recruited into the Knights of Columbus. So, you know, I'm, I was thankfully raised faithful Catholic by my father and uh, in Mass on Sunday, one of my friends, uh, Jason Winfield, who's kind of a cowboy and a, a, a jewelry trader, came up to me and said, hey, have you ever heard of the Knights of Columbus? And all I knew about them was um, I'd see them as honor guards for the bishop at you know, uh, Christmas Eve Mass or whatever it might be. Um, but he told me a little bit more, and he said the Knights of Columbus are the first line of defense for our faith and for our families. And uh, you know, I really think you should join. And a few weeks later, I joined. And not long after that, I, was, I started becoming really active with the Knights. Do you think it's had a positive influence on your life? Yeah, the Knights have been excellent. I mean, you know, the, the primary purpose of the Knights of Columbus is to form Catholic men in their faith and to make Catholic men better, better fathers, uh, better friends, better spouses. And I think the Knights of Columbus, more than almost anything else in my life, has really done that for me. It's made me a better father, made me a better spouse, and made me just a better Catholic in general. Interesting. Do you think that's had an effect on your family as well? Yeah, you know, all my kids, uh, my, I have four kids, six and under, and it's, it's actually kind of funny. The Knights of Columbus are so patriotic, they think that the American flag is the Knights of Columbus flag. But, uh, you know, I see in general, when my kids see these men of great faith doing great actions and helping their communities and helping their families, and when they see their dad doing that, and when my wife sees me doing that, and when my, my wife sees me around other good Catholic men, there's no doubt that they're appreciative of what I'm able to do and what the Knights have done for us as a family. Um, and I personally am, feel the exact same way. I think of, um, I'd probably be lost if it wasn't for the formation I've received from the Knights of Columbus. Interesting. And you've accomplished some great things with the Knights of Columbus. You've been uh, Grand Knight to your council. I think you've probably yeah. filled almost every officer role in the council. You've been a <laughs> district deputy. You've been a state officer, state deputy. And yeah. now you're on the uh, board of directors for the Knights of Columbus. Yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey. So I've only been a Knight about 11, maybe 12 years now. Um, and actually, because of a tragedy, um, our our Grand Knight had actually died in a car accident. Um, I, I sort of got moved up quickly through the chairs to Grand Knight. And then being an attorney, I got asked to be on the state officer's uh, the state officers team as a state advocate, working my way up through the chairs there, eventually state deputy. And I think partially because of my youth and, and a lot to do with the fact that my uh, I drag my family everywhere and they like to they like to see a family man. I got invited to be on the board of directors and elected by uh, all the delegates at the Supreme Convention a couple of years ago. And it really has been an amazing journey. And that's part of the formation, I think, that you receive in the Knights is it's not just about um, just your Catholic faith or your, or your community involvement. It's also about teaching you to be a leader. Mm -hmm. And I would strongly encourage um, any new knight or, or even knights that have been knights for 30 years, if you haven't taken on a leadership role yet, you really ought to get more involved with that. Um, you know, whether it's even just a guard position or the chancellor or director of one of your programs, maybe it's your Food for Families program or your basketball free throw program, whatever it might be, take on some of those leadership roles um, because that's another area in which the Knights is very strong in formation. Very good. Well, it sounds like you've made a deep impact, not just in your family and in your own life, but also in the lives of Knights of Columbus and in the Catholic community. Yeah, you know, and that's, I, that's what I love about the Knights as well, is that, um, and you know, and, I, and, and the Knights insurance in particular. So the Knights insurance, obviously I buy insurance because I've got four young kids and a wife, and I want them to be taken care of in case anything ever happens to them. But the other reason I buy insurance, and our state chaplain talks about this, is I consider it a tithe. Because the Knights of Columbus really are, as John Paul II said, St. John Paul II said, the strong right arm of the Catholic Church. And the reason we're able to be the strong right arm of the Catholic Church is because of our, uh, our insurance program. And that really all those proceeds go to uh, further the mission of the Knights of Columbus, which is the mission of the church, and, and to strengthen families 
and to strengthen the parish. And I think that that's something also that I love about Knights of Columbus is that, you know, we reach into the peripheries, as Mother Teresa said, as St. Teresa said. We go into the peripheries, we find there's a need, but the peripheries don't have to be in Calcutta. The peripheries could be in your next door neighbor. The peripheries are most often times in your own parish, you know, work, doing work within your parish, with your parish priest, with your bishop, with your fellow parishioners. Those are often the peripheries, especially in the new evangelization that we're called to. And I don't think that there's any organization in the church that's more effective at that than the Knights of Columbus. So because one man invited you to join the Knights of Columbus, it's created a whirlwind of impact yeah. in our world, hasn't it? That's true. And you know, and that's what I love. I, I, I love St. Teresa of Calcutta as well. Um, she was actually canonized on my birthday, so I figured I'd better have a devotion to her. But uh, one of her quotes was, You may feel that you're only a drop of water in the ocean, but were it not for that drop of water, the ocean would be less great. I think that very well sums up what the Knights of Columbus is, is that we may all feel like one drop of water, we may feel like all we are is one drop of water, but together we are an ocean, and we're an ocean for change, for good. And that's why we ask every Catholic man to join our ranks. That's why our bishops want every Catholic man to be a Knight of Columbus. They don't want them to be a Knight of Columbus just for the heck of it. Our bishops want every Catholic man to be a Knight of Columbus because they know that we are a unifying force for good in the church and for our families. And the more of us there are, the stronger the church is and the stronger our families are. And that's why it's our duty, it's honestly in a lot of ways our moral duty to ask every eligible Catholic man that we know to join the Knights of Columbus and encourage them to do so. Because you never know that that man might be that extra drop of water that brings about some great change in the church or protects our families or your parish or whatever it might be. Or he might grow into a state deputy. He might grow into a state deputy. He might be the next Supreme Knight. You never Indeed. know. Somebody had to originally ask Carl Anderson to join. So. That's right. So uh, if you had a chance to talk to somebody out there who's listening to this and watching it right now, and they've never recruited a member, and they're a little intimidated about it, it's a little yeah. fearful sometimes if you haven't done it a lot, what advice would you give them? You know, I'd say talk to them. You know how to talk to people. You, you know, at the end of Mass, you don't have to be the hard salesman. All you need to do is go up and talk to them. You see some guy in Mass that you may know a little bit, you may not know at all. But go up to that guy, maybe he has a young family with him, or you've seen him in a mask a couple times, and say, like, hey, what's your name? Just have a conversation with him. Ask him his name. Ask him about his family. Ask him what he does for a living. And as you're talking, say, look, I'm a Knight of Columbus, and this is a great organization. We do great things. It's a little bit about what we do. Uh, you know, we form people in their faith, and I think that uh, we would love to have you join us. Would you be willing to hear some more information, or, or would you be willing to join now? And I think... I think just having that initial conversation, you know, you can't, no matter what we do, we could put out emails, we could put out flyers, we could put out signs, we have whole booths of information and, and videos and everything else, but if you don't have some other, some man ask you to join, you're not likely to join. I mean, almost all of us had some man ask us to join and encourage us to join, and because of that, that's why we joined the Knights of Columbus. And it all starts with a conversation. You, all, you have to go up to that person and just start talking. Very good. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, Jim. And thank you for your leadership. Thank you. I think that's one take. Not good. <laughs> Don't you? I, I thought it was well, yeah.